Hi! Today I want to show you how to do short rows. Let's do this. In order to try and understand what foreshortened rows are, it's important to think of a triangle like this one. I have all of my stitches on my needle here, and then I have all of my work up here. And the only thing that is really different, because that was really obvious, the only thing that's different is that the from the needle to the start, there is a different length. So at the top there is a lot of stitches, there's a lot of yarn up here, and there's a little less at the bottom down here. So it would be <laughs> it would be intuitive if we if we shortened the rows sort of um, this way. But really, what we're going to do is we're going to work back and forth on the needle, and instead of picking up all of the all of the stitches all the way down, we are going to only work some of them, and then we're going to turn and go back. Meaning that I have foreshortened the row, so here it would be for four row, four stitches. And then the next time I've foreshortened it eight stitches, and then twelve, and so on. And therefore we get this result where we have more rows at the top than we have at the bottom, or on the we have more on the right side than we have on the left side. So up here at the end I have been working back and forth a lot, and on the bottom I have been working not as much. So, and after we do that, then we can pick up our foreshortened rows in different ways. We can, as I have done here, we can just pick up all of them at once, or we can do another thing where we just work a little, then work back up, then we work a little bit more, and then we work back up, and so that when we initially do it, we have a triangle, and then when we pick up, we get another triangle. So, I want to show you here how to turn. So, you can see here that I have a little thing that is very different here, and then I have worked back up. There's a little blob of a stitch here where I have I have pulled it. So, basically, I have, let's say I just have a stitch here, and then I turn and I go back. Then I will have a point. I will have a point in the middle where I have a turning row, and there will be one stitch at one point, and there will be two stitches going back, and therefore I will get a hole. And therefore we need to do something when we turn. Um, and and the thing I'm going to show you here, I have heard a lot of people call it sh German short rows. Uh, you can all also call them for pulled short rows. So you have other short rows that are sort of wrapped and turned, and these are pulled, turned and pulled. Um, and yeah, I should also. Um, this is a a part where, a piece where I have picked up all of the stitches at once, and therefore they're sort of um, they're crunched together. And if we do it the other way, they won't be as much. But if you look here really close, you can see that it's really the only thing they're pulling a little bit where they have been picked up. But that's the only thing where we can really see the uh, the short rows and. Therefore, it's a really good technique, I think. So, to begin with, of course, we need to cast on some stitches, and I am just going to cast on 20. If you have a pattern where you need to do short rows and don't know how, then I would suggest you just do these 20 first and just get to know the method of working before you actually get to work on your project. <clears throat> I'm just going to cast on these 20 and then I am going to work down to... Oh, the first row I'm just going to knit all of the stitches, but afterwards we are going to knit... We're going to, to pick up, we're going to turn and pull every five stitches. And I will show you, of course, every step of that. But first I'll just knit all of the stitches so I have something to work in looks like this and then we're just going to turn and go back down. I know I'm working on circular needles but they are my favorites and I use them for anything so. 
So now we're just going to work down to the fifth stitch, and then we're going to do something, and then we're going to work back up. So basically, work until you have four stitches left on your needle. So I am going to purl <clears throat> until there are four stitches left. And yeah, the circular needles here, I think the only real sort of advantage to them is that they're made of wood and I really, I, they're just so much more comfortable to work on than the uh, yeah, other needles I've tried. The only thing that's a little bit annoying about these ones is that the stitches can sometimes get caught in the little uh, adapter piece here for the cord, between the needle and the cord, but yeah. When we get to the fifth stitch here, we're just going to purl it. And now don't work anymore. Just pass back the stitch the stitch you have on your needle. Pass it back to the the needle that you're working from. So basically you now have a stitch and you have your yarn coming from that stitch on the on the needle that you when you turn have in your right hand. And the only thing you need to do is put the yarn on top of the right needle and then keep working. You can, if you want to pull it a little bit, it would be better if the little, if you just feel it, there'll be a little knot at the top. That should really be sort of center top. If it's not, it's not a big deal, but don't pull it all the way to the other side and don't leave it all the way down. But if you accidentally do, it's not going to be a big problem. The thing you really, really need to do is just to put the yarn on top of the needle and then keep on working. And after you've worked for a, a time on this, you will be able to know approximately how much you need to pull it for the little knot to be at the, at the middle of your needle. Now just knit all of the stitches back up to the top. And now you can see that where we turned, we of course have less rows. And on the side where we have worked both down and back up, we have more. And at the point where they where they switch, we have a this this uh, stitch that has been pulled, and it's really big, and there's sort of a knot of it. When you just look at all of your stitches, it's the big blob on your needle. So now we're going to work down until there are four stitches until your blob. So basically we're going to work until the tenth stitch before the end. I always sort of have this... I don't really work in how many stitches do I need to work, I work in how many do I need to leave, but most pattern will tell you how many to work. So. I'm just going to purl all the way down to that. Shouldn't be too long because this is just a test piece. <laughs> so now I have four stitches, then I have my blob, and then I have four stitches on the other side. So I'm going to slip the fifth stitch here back to the back to the right hand needle. Then I'm going to pull it Pull, blah, sorry, I'm going to put the yarn on top of the right needle, so from down there all the way up here. Then you can pull it a little bit if you need to until the knot is in, in the center. But I just really want to stress that the thing that makes this work is that you put the yarn on top of the needle. It's not the pulling that does anything. It's only the, the part where you take the, the yarn and you put it on top of the right hand uh, needle after you have slipped the recently worked stitch. So of course now again you're going to just knit all the way on onto the top of to the to the beginning of the row and now you can see that you have even more of a triangle here. 
the next time here we need to work until the 15th and again you're just going to work until there are four stitches until the blob. So we're just spacing our turn and pulls really well out between each other. We just want them, or not well, just uh, regularly. We want them to be spaced regularly. Um, unless, of course, there is something else going on <laughs> where we want something different. So here we are. There are five stitches until the blob and therefore I'm going to purl the next one. Then I will pass it back, <clears throat> making sure that I get the new stitch and not the old stitch that hasn't been worked. So just here we go. So turn the work. And again, it will look like this when you have turned and then you're just going to put the yarn on top of the right hand needle and pulling that stitch a little bit if you need to. So that the the nut is on the on the top. And then you'll just keep your tension on the on the yarn and then you will work back until the the beginning of the row. So now I don't need to to turn and wrap, turn and pull these anymore. I just need to leave them as they are. I have three on here and again this is where I can do two things. Either I can work to this, pick up the next one and work back, or and then to the next one and work back and so on, or I could just pick up all of them at once. So first I'm going to show you how to just pick up all of them at once. And picking up these are as easy as they are to, to make. So you'll just purl down to the first one. So this is the, the first pulled stitch I have. There are sort of two pieces of yarn on the front and there are two pieces on the back. They look sort of like this. And they might be twisted together, they might not be. And the only thing we need to do is go through both of them and purl both of them together. So it's as easy as just purling. You just need to go through two stitches rather than one. And it's a little easier than actually pull, uh, purling two, two actual stitches together. Because they are already sort of intertwined. They're already... Um, sort of one stitch, even though there are two pieces of yarn. So just go into it, purl it, and go back to, to purling all the other stitches. <clears throat> and when you've picked up all of them, so that was the last one, you will just Purl down to the start, or to the end of the row. <clears throat> and uh, then my last stitch had become really big, so it was really difficult to, to work. So I'm just going to try that again. Here we are. Okay, so now I have, I have short road, and I have picked up all of the stitches. And now I have, I'm in a situation where all of my... Stitches are normal again, and I can just continue working in those. So let me just do it again, just short row again, so that I have the, the three turned and pulled stitches. Um, so here I have three again. And now I want to show you the other way of picking up these stitches. And this way you are going to... No, I will show you in a, in a second, I think. So basically what we want to do is we want to, to take them in increments. We want to ease out the, the tension that you saw on the big piece to begin with by just working down to the first one from the top to this one. Then I'm going to work the next stitch and I'm going to pull it and then I'm going to work back up. Back up to the beginning. 
And of course, we don't want to pick up the first stitch and then work the next one and then turn and go back up without pulling or doing doing anything else to it. So basically, every time we want to turn and go back, we need to do something to the stitch because if we don't do anything to it, it will there will be a hole and we've worked so hard not to get any holes. So we really need to even when we do this, we need to to uh, turn and pull the stitches that we've um, where we where we turn in. I don't know if that made sense, but I'm going to show you. That might be easier to understand. So I will work down to the first one here. So again, I'm just going to go through both of these pieces of yarn that are, that make up this stitch. If you can't see it, just feel for the knot at the top. Now I'm going to just purl the next stitch and pull it back over, slip it back, I guess, to the to the other needle. And <clears throat> again, we need to be able to pull the stitch. That's how we know that we actually got the stitch and not the the worked stitch and not the, the stitch beneath it. But do not pull it more than just until the knot is at the top here. And then we can work back up to the beginning. So here we are. That was the first one, and now it will sort of seem as if we did nothing, because I had three turn and pulls before, and now I have three. But in this in this row, I'm going to go down and I'm going to put, uh, pick up the first one, then I'm going to continue working, and I'm going to pick up the next one too. So again, it's it's just a matter of easing out the pulling of these turn stitches so that they, they are not going to pull as much on the fabric and it's going to lay flatter and better. So here I picked up the first one and now I'm going to work till the next one. So that was the next one here. And then I am going to pick up the one after, after that, slip it back to the other, to the other needle put the yarn on top and work back. And of course, um, these are two different techniques. You can use both. It's not, I, I think sometimes the easing, the picking them up one after one and uh, going back in between looks a little better. But on the other side, if you really want your um, your turning stitches to, to show, it might be easier, it might be better to to pick them all up in one go. So then I've worked down. Now I have two stitches on my needle that needs to be picked up and I'm here at the first one. So I'll pick up that and then I will work to the next one. I will pick that up too. And then I will work the next stitch, slip it back, turn, and then I will pull this stitch. And then I will just knit back to the top of this row, and then I only have one stitch that I need to go back and pick up. Another thing that this does is that it's a little bit more interesting to, to work because you have less sort of long rows, if you will, and um, it sort of becomes a bigger piece than the first one where we just short rowed and then went back and picked up all of them. You can also, oh you can't really because my edge is curling, but you would be able to see if we flattened this out that this piece in the beginning where I just picked all of them up at once it is sort of more of an angle. Whereas if you pick them up one after one, you get something which is more round, if you will. So short rowing is often used to make round things. I will show you one at the end that I have made, which is completely round. 
or it's a half circle, but it would have been round if I had continued. And um, getting the the completely round look will be easier if you pick them up one after one. Now the last stitch, you're just going to pick it up and then work to the end. If you're used to doing wraps, then then this extra, the extra um, stitch here would be continue. The, bah, sorry, would be <laughs> that made no sense. That would be considered the second wrap. So here we are. I just wanted to show you a little bit closer what it actually does to the stitch, and you can see here they are a little bit irregular, and that is how I know that that's where I picked up. And I have a little bit of a mistake in the work here. That is not a stitch that I have picked up. That is not the the short rowing that makes that kind of stitch. But this is. These long stitches up here, those are the, the, the places where I have I have short rowed and I've picked up stitches. And really you need to well, basically, if you're following a pattern, you don't need to because then you're just following a pattern. But if you're making something yourself, which is supposed to be round, then you need to choose whether or not you want this look that I have here, which is my half circle. And I have just picked up all of the stitches at once, um, <clears throat> which means that I get these sort of flat edges on this round. If you look at the at the top here, I'll get I get flat edges or if you want to do it the other way and get different edges. <clears throat> Another thing that is really important to see here is that I um, I get the holes. This is why I only did half a circle, because I have legs on this one. But I have holes on this one, because I actually didn't wrap it. Um, so if you if you have a, an issue wrapping, or if you think it's really difficult, or if you just don't want to, if you really want this look, you can just not uh, wrap and turn, or turn and pull. You will just, you know... You'll just turn and go back and then then you'll get this look where you have a little there's a little sort of knot thing here and then you have a hole. And I think this looks really pretty, but it's um it's up to you what you want to do and what how you want it to look. Thank you so so much for watching. I hope to see you again next Friday where I will show you how to short row the heel of a sock. <laughs>